Yo, what's up gang? It's Cash back again on another video. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about my experience as a non-binary person getting top surgery. Y'all ready? Let's get it. So I've been wanting top surgery for probably like two or three years, but in June of 2020, it got to the point where I was like, okay, I need it. I really need to look into this. So I called my insurance company and they were like, yeah, as long as you get a therapist to write you a letter saying that it's medically necessary, we'll cover everything. And I was like, everything? And they were like, yep. So I was like, bet, let's go. So I called every top surgeon, you know, in the hour radius around me and no one took my insurance. And I was like, okay, great. So in September, mind you, I, you know, started in June, I had a consult with Guy Trenk of Jones in Norfolk, three and a half hours away from me. So I drove down there and I saw this guy and he's from South Africa. And so he has like, South African accent, which sounds a little bit like a British accent. Mind you, he's a white man, so I don't feel bad like doing his accent. We had been in the room about 30 seconds. I opened my shirt. He gets a phone call. He was like, I have to go. They need me in surgery. Can you stick around here for like three hours? And I was like, I guess. Okay, like I'm not driving back down here tomorrow. So I just went thrifting. He finally gives me a call to come back. This was like 7.30 on a Friday night. He's like, okay, I just had to amputate someone's finger because they shot it off. And I was like, who are you? So he looked at my chest and was like, wow, you've got some hefty titties. And I was like, and then he kept telling me how he's like worked with transsexuals before. And I was like, Maybe some outdated terminology here. He's in his 70s, but he's he was like one of the pioneering surgeons of phalloplasty. So he has worked with trans people for a really long time and he's like, he has a really great reputation. So I was like, let me just put everything aside and you know, you can try my titties off. He was calling me he and wanted me to tell him about my transness. And I was like, oh, like I'm non-binary. So whatever. He was like, so you're binary? And I was like, non-binary like he'd clearly never heard of you know that terminology before and i think he'd only operated on trans men so he was like if you get me a letter from your therapist saying that you need this surgery then i'll do it and i was like bet i got the letter i submitted it to them and then they submitted it to the insurance company and in very late october i think they gave me a call saying that the insurance had approved it, they were gonna cover everything, and she scheduled me for my pre-op appointment for like early November, and I scheduled my surgery for November 25th. So I was super excited. It was a really long couple weeks that I had to wait, because I was just so like, I need to do this, I need to do this, let's go. So I went for my pre-op appointment, and they basically told me everything I need to do before surgery. He operates in a Santerra hospital, so I had to go to the Santerra hospital close to me and get some blood work done the week before to make sure everything was okay before he operated. My surgery was scheduled for Wednesday the 25th. On Monday the 23rd, my partner and I drove down to Norfolk so I could get my COVID test. And then we stayed in an Airbnb. We did some, you know, shopping, thrifting while we waited. And then on Wednesday morning, I woke up super early at like four. I had to be at the hospital at five to check in. Where are we going? To the hospital. For what? To get your titties chopped off. Snip, snap, 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 snap. And they took me back at like 5.30. I said goodbye to Kim and went back. They did a bunch of pre-op stuff, gave me an IV, whatnot. And I just sat there till like, seven with no phone or anything and then they took me up and the doctor like busted in he wears these like red suspenders he's a really interesting guy and he was like oh I forgot to mark you up let me let me mark you up so he like drew on my chest I guess where I needed to cut and stuff like that I was like I'm glad you forgot then I fell asleep I woke up in the recovery room and Kim was there and I was super groggy groggy what did you say what did you just say? I made it funny. Before that, what what is that? Pee pee. For what? Pee pee. On my chest, I felt like pressure and it felt sore. My surgeon doesn't put nipple coverings and he doesn't make you wear a vest like a lot of surgeons do. 
So I could look down and see my chest, and I was like, whoa. Whoa. Does it look good? Yeah, it looks really good. That's nude. Can you show me my scars? I can't see. Uh, why is this nipple so big? <laughs> I was like high from the drugs, but I was like, oh my god, like cool. And I was really hungry because I couldn't eat for, you know, since the night before. So Kim started feeding me some jello or whatever. So I spent the night in the hospital. I was up and then I would take a Percocet every two hours or so and fall back asleep. So he put drains to drain the fluid from the worked on area and they looked like little blood grenades. Here, I'll put a picture of them. So that was the most uncomfortable part because they kind of went into my armpits. I'll show you guys the scar in a minute. And then the next morning, Kim drove me home. Day two, how you feeling? A little sore, but okay. <laughs> you look so cute! <laughs> and I was really, really uncomfortable for like probably two days. Are you okay? <laughs> so can't move us. You know that little like babushka thing? <laughs> Do you want that? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm gonna do your babushka. My little titty list babushka. <laughs> what are you doing? So close. Can you imagine if you were like, I have to be. <laughs> I had a really bad rash from the Percocet, so I just was taking Tylenol. So it was, it, I was, you know, in a considerable amount of pain. The drains were really hurting since they went right into like the crotch of my armpit. So every time I moved, that was really bothering me. I was originally scheduled to get my drains out on the Friday after my surgery, which was on Wednesday. You're supposed to record the outputs of the drain, but on Monday I was like, there's nothing coming out of these. So he was like, yeah, come down on Tuesday and I'll take the drains out. And I was like, thank God. Are you excited? Yes. This is disgusting. Gonna get your drains out. Do, do, do. It's about this much tube inside of your chest. So the nurse was like, okay, take a deep breath in and then don't breathe. And then she pulled it out and it was so gross cause like I could just feel it coming out of my chest. I got really lightheaded after, but I felt a lot better after my drains were taken out. I would say like one week post-op, it sucked. And then between week one and two, it was uncomfortable. And then I would say from week three to five, it was annoying. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, but it, it wasn't a walk in the park. It was working with a lot of titty before so it was a big change and my body was like <laughs> this is what my chest looks like i'm officially four months post-op i had double incisions so that means there are two scars he took my nipples off flattened my chest made the nipples small like uh, a man's and then put them back on so i don't know if you can see but i have like little stitch marks around my nipples yeah i think that looks Pretty good. My scars are getting a little bit lighter than they were. In about a year, they'll disappear significantly more. It's a little tiny, tiny bit sore if I if I hit it right or if I do something. But I have like good range of motion. I'm a little sad that this guy is so hefty. When I when I was there last, he was like, "Are you happy?" And I was like, "Yeah, I am. I love it." This one's a little meaty. And he was like, meaty. And he was like, oh, if you lose weight, that'll go away. My scars are very like thin. A lot of people have really, really thick scars. And like I said, it's only been four months. So these will lighten over time. A lot of trans guys who get top surgery have like a completely flat chest. But my surgeon was like, okay, well, cisgender men don't have completely flat chest. They have pec muscles. So it 
looks kind of weird if you're just straight. So I don't do that. I was like, okay. So that's why I have, you know, you can see from the side, I have some pec muscles. My rib cage is also like protruding on this side. So I think he made this one a little bit heftier than this one to kind of balance it out. Because when you look from the side, they look even. So as far as sensation, I'm very numb starting from about here. This is the most numb part and it feels really weird and tingly when I like touch it. I don't know why because my scar isn't even here. And then here it's all numb. And then starting here it gets numb and tingly and it kind of hurts a little bit if you press too hard. Same with back here. I don't really have a sensation on my nipples. I just made direct eye contact with my neighbor looking through her window. I do have more than I used to. Sometimes I'll be like putting cream on it and I'll be like looking away and I can feel my fingers moving but I can't feel anything on my actual nipple and I'm like, <laughs> I still have some internal stitches poking through but those dissolve in about six months. Um, you could see one here. I have some stretch marks. I don't know if you guys can see right here and right here, I think, because the skin was pulled really tight. So when I started moving at first, it was, it got a little bit stretched, but uh, I think if I just put some cream on them, they'll, you know, they're not that noticeable. Here you can see my drain hole. That's the scar for that one and the scar for this one. So as you can see, they were right in my armpit, so I couldn't like move that well. They really hurt and it was just... It just had one suture holding it in so I felt like I was gonna rip them out all the time I was like yeah not not that pleasant I definitely recommend my surgeon if you're a trans guy especially I feel like he's a great surgeon he doesn't really understand anything that's like not a binary trans person so unless you're like okay with his like weird bedside manner in that respect Maybe go to someone else, but so this is what it looks like with a shirt on sideways. See, like, even though I have like some titty, you can't really tell when it's, you know, when you're looking at me like this. Um, but yeah, so I am very, very happy with how it looks and how it feels. I'm sure it'll heal even better. I'll give you guys an update when I'm about a year post-op so you guys can see how it's healing. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Let me know if you have any questions about top surgery. Um, you can hit me up on Instagram or in the comments and I'll answer them for you. I'll be back next week with another one. Peace.